Hey, up, Dan. What's the matter? I'm struggling to get my head around this SB three-way valve and how it should be installed. Do you know what? They cause a lot of problems with installers. Let's take it right back to basics. Right then, getting right back to basics. These are the parts of the SB valve as delivered to site. New in the box, if you like. We've got the actuator head, more commonly referred to as the motor. We've got the valve body. We've got the drive shaft, sometimes referred to as the castle nut. We've got a securing screw to hold the actuator head or the motor to the valve body securely. And we've got a couple of indicators. We've got two because the valve can spin in two directions, clockwise and anti-clockwise. So depending on how we set our valve up, we'll use one or other of the indicators. Right, so the drive shaft is only designed to go onto the valve body in one position. What you'll notice is there's a raised ridge around the top of the drive shaft. That raised ridge should always be uppermost. What the drive shaft also has, and we've coloured it red here just to make it easier to see, is a groove, a vertical groove that runs up and down. When I initially put the drive shaft onto the valve body, you'll notice that the drive shaft doesn't sit down correctly onto the valve. That's because the drive shaft is only designed to go on in one position. If I rotate the drive shaft, eventually a key and a keyway engage, and the drive shaft drops down onto the valve body without the use of any force. It's very important to make sure the drive shaft is correctly located onto the valve body because the drive shaft gives us a big clue as to which port on the valve is closed. If I rotate the drive shaft and you watch the branch port on the front of the valve body, what you'll notice is now the vertical groove is in line with the branch, the branch port is actually closed. So what we've learnt here is wherever that groove points is the port that is actually closed. The three-way valve is a diverter valve, meaning it will either feed heating or domestic hot water, but never both at the same time. An important point to note when piping the valve up is you can't bring the flow into the branch connection of the valve. You can bring the flow into this connection, you can bring the flow into this connection, but never into the branch connection. The valve motor has three wires, a blue wire, which is the neutral, a brown wire, which is permanent live, and a black wire, which is the switch live for domestic hot water. This is the installation sheet that comes with the valve. At the moment, the valve is in configuration A. If you choose to install the valve in configuration A, you will need to change the jumpers. The jumpers come in the vertical position. You'll need to change them to the horizontal position for configuration A. OK then, with the jumpers in the vertical position, the valve will move in an anti-clockwise direction when it moves from heating to hot water demand. When the jumpers are in a horizontal position, it reverses the process, so the valve will move in a clockwise direction when moving from heating to hot water demand. Just to mention, if you are going to change the direction of these jumpers, please be aware it's important to safely isolate before you do so. The jumpers connect to 230 volts, so please ensure safe isolation at all times. The valve is now installed to configuration B. If you install to configuration B, the jumpers can be left in the vertical position. This is the valve installed to configuration C. If you install the valve to configuration C, you will not need to change the jumpers. They can be left in the vertical position. This is the valve installed to configuration D. If you install the valve to configuration D, you will need to change the jumpers. The jumpers will need to be changed from the vertical position to the horizontal position. So what if the valve has already been installed, Ian? Do you know what? There's a real simple procedure to follow, Dan, and if you follow it, it'll help you to set the valve up properly. OK. Can you talk me through it, please? Yeah, of course I can. Ensure the power's turned off. OK, Dan, now you've safely isolated, you can pop the cover off. OK. OK, Dan, the first thing is to make sure there's no central heating or domestic hot water demand on the unit. OK, now you can turn the power back on and we can carry out our checks. So, if you go into the menu structure for me, and go down to operation, uh, and click the button to go in, and then you can scroll down to domestic hot water and central heating and make sure they're both turned off. Perfect. They're both off. Excellent.
Okay, so if you've got a Madoka type controller, again, ensure that heating and hot water are both turned off. Okay, Dan, now the power's back on, what you can do is you can check between the black and the blue wire with your multimeter to ensure there's not 230 volts on the black wire. If you remember, 230 volts on the black wire means there's a domestic hot water demand, so we want to ensure that there is no domestic hot water demand. So we know where the valve should be. Okay, let's do it. Great stuff. Okay, now we know the valve is in its default position, which is of course central heating. Right, so if you've got a monoblock type system, the wires are the same colour, but the connections are numbered differently. Now you've established there's no demand on the black wire, wait a while for the valve to come to rest in its default position. Ensure the power's turned off. Okay, now we're safely isolated, you can remove the valve motor. Okay, so I can see the cutout on this valve spindle is facing this outlet, which is going off to the domestic hot water cylinder. That would indicate this port is shut. That's right, spot on. Okay, so now I know the valve body is in the correct position, I need to make sure that the rotation is also going to be correct. So if I refer to, back to the valve motor, offer them up together, and I can see that the motor is gonna rotate anti-clockwise, and if I rotate the spindle anti-clockwise, 90 degrees, it is now closing off the port to the central heating, opening up the outlet to the domestic hot water tank. That would be correct. Okay, so now I know that the valve body is in the correct position and the motor is gonna turn the right way. All I need to do is reassemble the valve and the motor. Just one other thing to be aware of, Dan, before you get too carried away, the dial on the top has two positions. There are two positions. If the red ring's showing, the valve's in the manual position, so you can move the valve manually. Always make sure it's pushed all the way in. You shouldn't be able to see the red ring when the valve's in operation. Will do. Okay, that's it, Dan. You'll probably notice as you put the dial back on, it clicks twice. Once the red ring's showing, push it again, red ring's not visible. Hopefully you found this information useful. If you'd like to learn more, please consider booking onto a Daikin training course. If you need more immediate help on site, please contact the technical helpline.